Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in the matrix algebra phase of this playlist. And let me jump right into where we left off. And the, here we're going to talk about orthogonal vectors and matrices. Now, two vectors, a and, or x and y, are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. Now, what that means is that the two vectors are perpendicular to one another or there's a 90 degree angle between them. So remember vectors can be thought of as starting at the origin and then dangling out in space somewhere. And if you have two vectors you can measure the angle between them and if it's a 90 degree angle then they're called orthogonal and their dot product is zero and it's, and it's based upon this relationship that we covered earlier. Now, if the dot product or the vector product or the cross product is one, it says that the vector's been normalized. So the length of that vector is one. Now, remember, length is really the square root of this and the square root of this, but the, you know, the square root of one is one. So we can take it off. If this dot product is one, it's normalized. So any vector can be normalized by dividing by its length. So if we have some vectors, for example, a equal 1, 1, minus 2, so that's starting at the origin and then goes out in space somewhere. It's three, it's, there's three components, so it's out in three, three dimensions somewhere. Now the, and it has a length. But if we take the vector and divide each component by its length, then what that does is it shrinks or compresses, uh, shrinks or expands that vector to a length of one. And so this is the trick to make it a length of one. Now, the columns of a matrix that are C, P by P are mutually orthogonal or normalized, then that matrix C is called orthogonal or orthonormal matrix. Either one, it's the same thing. And if so, the, the vectors are orthogonal to each other and each that means columns. So each column is orthogonal to another column and it's normalized. So it has a length of one. Then it satisfies this property. C transpose C is equal to C C transpose, which is the identity matrix. Now, this implies that C transpose is C inverse. It's the inverse of our matrix C. And it also implies that the determinant is either 1 or minus 1. And that becomes important when we're doing linear transformations later. To see that it's 1, the determinant of the identity matrix is 1, but C transpose C is, one, is the identity matrix, but the determinant of a product is the product of the determinants, but the determinant of a C transpose is the same as just C, so that's really C squared. And so anything squared equals one, that means it has to be one or minus one. Now here's some examples of orthogonal or orthonormal matrices that may prop up. This one here we'll, we'll use in um, principal components analysis. Now the next topic is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And as we proceed through this, and if you ever think, I'll never use this, then you're absolutely wrong because in multivariate analysis, eigenvalues and eigenvectors is actually the, the core of principal components analysis, which is data reduction. So if we have a, a square matrix A and a scalar lambda, and a non-zero vector x that satisfies this relationship, a times x equal to lambda times x, then lambda is called an eigenvalue of a, and x is an eigenvector of a that corresponds to that eigenvalue. So here's a quick example. Let's let a equal this, and x is 2, 1, and then if we do this matrix product here, that equals four, but we can factor out a constant two, and then that's two times x, right? So ax is equal to two times x. That says two is the eigenvalue, and x, which is two, one, is an eigenvector. And really what this means is, you know, from a geometrical standpoint, if we're gonna transform uh, this vector x by the transformation a, then 
the factor 2, 1 is invariant. All it does is it shrinks it or expands it. Some of the other vectors will compress. You know, they do different things. I'm, I'm being a little vague here, but it, um, more on this in another video. It turns out that there's another eigenvector, 1, 1, that has the same exact property as here. So it turns that when a matrix is the dimensions is two by two, then there's two eigenvalues, two eigenvectors. How do you find them? Well, this is how you find them. If you take this matrix or this equation here and subtract that to the other side, so it equals zero, and then you right factor out an X, you get this equation. Now, that says that if we take a non-zero X times this matrix, equals zero. It says these columns are linearly dependent, meaning one of the columns can be written as a linear combination of the other columns. That's called singular. Well, if it's singular, it means its determinant is zero, this equation. And that's called the characteristic equation. Now we solve this for the lambda values, the possible lambda values that satisfy this. So we have this equation, and if we use the equation up that we, we used up here. So A is 1, 2, minus 1, 4. 1, 2, minus 1, 4. And then we have the lambda minus lambda. The determinant of this generates this equation, which is a quadratic in lambda, which we can solve. And there's two values, a 3 and a 2, that satisfy this. So these are the eigenvalues for A, for the matrix A. Now, how do we find the eigenvectors associated with these eigenvalues? Well, you plug them back into the equation. So we plug in three to this equation, you know, into this equation and solve for x. So a, all the values there we know, we know we're plugging in three here. This is at the diagonal of one. So we know everything here, which is this. And then we solve it for the x1 and x2 that make it true. And then you multiply that up, you get this equation. Well, it turns out that this is the solution. Any constant times the 1, 1 vector is the solution to this. Now, typically, so that vector is can be any length. You know, it, it's either expanded or shrunk that solves this. So to find one vector, that we can all agree on, we, we typically normalize it. So we make it a length of one. So we take this vector and divide it by each component by its length, and we get this. So this is the first, uh, this is an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue three. And now we do the same thing for here. So we plug in two into this equation, solve it for x1 and x2, and we get this eigenvector. This, and this is an eigenvector. So there's an infinite number of eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue, too. So we normalize it, and now we make that vector a length of 1. So how do we do this in R? We enter a matrix, and the, the function eigen creates the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and that's the columns. Of the, of the matrix. And these values are what we got up there. Now, this produces a list. So to use these, I like to store the eigenvalues into some variable, and then I store the eigenvectors into some value, and then we can look at them. So A times the first eigenvector produces this, if we take the first eigenvalue times the first eigenvector, it produces the same thing, and it better because that's what we just solved. And the second eigenvector and value, they also create an equation that's equal. Notice the dot product of itself. We can use cross product, so that tells us the length of that. Or it's, yeah, well, we'd have to take the square root to be the length, but since the dot product is 1, and the square root of that is 1, so it's also the length. So it's normalized is what I'm saying. Vector 2 has been normalized. Note that the product of vector 1 and vector 2 are, are not 0, so they're not orthogonal. And the, 
And the last piece here, it, that if A is an M by N matrix with eigenvalues, lambda 1 through lambda N, the determinant of A is equal to the product of the eigenvalues. And, and to me, this is a, that was my mind, because, it, you know, you, it's easy to prove and easy to see once you see the proof, but you look at that and you're like, how can they be related? Or the trace of A, which is the sum of the diagonal elements, is actually the sum of the eigenvalues. And that, to me, that's just crazy. Now, if we were to do that in R, we have a matrix A. We look at the, we grab the eigenvalues, and then we, we take the determinant of A is 6. The product of the eigenvalues is 6. The trace of A is 5, and the sum of the eigenvalues is 5. So it does hold, at least for this that case. Now, this is the last topic. If A is symmetric, the eigenvalues are mutually orthogonal. That is that their dot product is zero. They're all at 90 degrees to each other. Um, and so therefore, this matrix C that contains the eigenvectors is an orthogonal matrix or an orthonormal matrix. It's the same thing. And if it's positive and positive definite, means all the eigenvalues are strictly greater than zero. Positive similar definite means the eigenvalues are non-negative. They could be zero. And the number of positive eigenvalues equals the rank. And so to see this in R, we do this. So we have a matrix, a symmetric matrix A. We store the eigenvalues in this character and the eigenvectors in A dot vec. And if we look at A dot vec with the transpose of A dot vec, it's the identity matrix. That tells me these. this is an orthonormal matrix. And if we look at the transpose of the eigenvectors versus times the eigenvectors, it's also the identity matrix. The eigenvalues are 18, 9, and 9. Notice there's three positives. And if we look at the rank of A, it's 3 because those are linked together. Okay, I better stop here. We're at 12 minutes, 30 seconds. Um, hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.